The beloved messenger of Allah والسلام, he's in Isra at Miraj. He's literally traveling through the heavens with Jibra'il alayhi salam and Isra and Mi'raj. And as he's traveling, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam smells something so beautiful, he can't ignore it. And I want you to, I want you to imagine this because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he arrives, right, and, and he's granted the opening, the, literally the, the, head, the skies open up the Prophet is greeted by angels upon angels sending salawat. Can you, first of all, we know that the Malaika love good smell. So I just say, SubhanAllah, what the, the scent must have been like. Right from that, just the smell of the Malaika. Right, the smell of the, the, the first heaven and the second heaven and the third heaven. And he sees seeing, subhanAllah, of Jannah, what that must have smelled like. But then for the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi to have a smell that exceeded that, that made him stop in his tracks and say, Ya Jibrail, alayhi salam, what is that smell? What is that? And he says, oh... This is the smell of the hairdresser of the daughter of Firaun. He doesn't even mention her name. He says, this is the smell of the hairdresser of the daughter of Firaun. First of all, this is like, okay, now I'm, I'm really bad at this, so you guys have to help me out. When you're a hairdresser, you're a blue-collar worker? Yeah, blue-collar worker? Okay. You're basically like, you know, you're not like CEO of a company. You're not like, you know, some high status. You're not coming from like some high status. You're, you're the hairdresser, not a pharaoh's wife. Not like the hairdresser of the queen. No, you're the hairdresser of the daughter of Pharaoh. And so, subhanAllah, the hairdresser, the, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is like, I, I, I need to know like what is so wonderful and significant about her that subhanAllah, I can smell her, I can smell her while I'm traveling right through on my journey to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. So tell me, tell me about her. And so he says, well, he begins to narrate to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that basically one day she's combing the hair of the daughter of Fir'aun and she drops the comb. And as she drops the comb, subhanAllah, she goes and she picks it up and she says, Bismillah. And so the daughter turns around and said, what did you say? She said, I said, Bismillah. She said, are you talking about my father? She said, no. No, child. I'm not talking about your father. Why? She says, Allah Rabbi wa Rabbuk wa Rabbil Alameen. That Allah is my Lord. And, you know, you probably don't know. Allah is your Lord. <laughs> And the Lord of the universe. And so the daughter becomes angry. She's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell my father what you said. And the hairdresser said in my southern accent, go run, tell that. <laughs> right. And so she goes and she tells her father, right? Like, pompous princess, right? Daddy. <laughs> my hairdresser said bismillah <laughs> and so he says what she said yeah she's been infected with this religion of Musa so you know in father fashion in tyrannical father fashion he says he's got to prove to his daughter right who he is so he says well you go you tell her to come here you tell her to report to me so she comes Right? Here I am. He said, do you believe in the Lord of Musa? She says, Allah Rabbi wa Rabbuk wa Rabbil Alameen. Talking about speaking truth to power. She's not doing it from like behind a, you know, a screen, typing Facebook, hitting that change button, boom! Right? No, she's standing directly in front of him. She knows what he's capable of. She knows all the babies that he's murdered. She knows all the men that he's murdered. 
And she says, Allah is my Lord and your Lord and the Lord of the universe. And so he says, okay, like I, I see your boldness. So he says, you know what? I'm, I'm not even, in this moment, I'm not even going to address you directly. Because I, I see your, you know, how you're presenting yourself. So he orders his soldiers, go bring her entire family and bring them to me. So her husband also worked in the court of Pharaoh. So he brings her husband. They go bring her five children from her home. One of them is an infant baby, like a baby in her arms. And they then, he then orders a cauldron pot to be boiled of oil, not just water, oil. You know, the difference between water and oil is that when it boils, if it touches you, it's going to stick. So even if you wipe it, it's gonna, the skin is going to come with it. So they boil this oil until it's bubbling. And he asked her, Say what you said again. She looks at him and she says, Allah Rabbi, Rabbuk, Rabbil Alameen. And he looks at her husband and he says, you allowed this? You let this happen? You let her be infected with this religion? And her husband says, Allah Rabbi, wa Rabbuk, wa Rabbil Alameen. And Pharaoh becomes infuriated. He orders his clothes to be ripped off and thrown into this boiling oil. And in front of his wife and his children, they boil him to his bones. And she's standing there watching. I can't imagine. I can't imagine the tears in her eyes or the lump in her. I can't imagine how she must have felt. And then he asked her again. She answered the same way. They started with her oldest child. He asked her again. She responded the same way. He put the next child and the next and the next until she's holding a baby in her arms. And he asked her again, you want to change your mind yet? And at that moment, she looks down at her baby. And of course, with the mother heart, she holds the baby a little bit tighter. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifests a miracle in her arms. This is the first child that we know to speak. This child speaks and says, Mama, don't be afraid, for you are on Sirat al Mustaqim. And literally, even in that, even with Pharaoh hearing that, he then becomes more angry, rips the child out of her arm, and then, subhanAllah, boils her, boils the, the child in this pot. And he asked her again, and she says, I just have one request. Bury us in the same grave that we could be together in the akhirah. Oh, she said, I'm not, I'm not afraid. I know you're only sending me to my Lord. I, this, is a, this is a whole level of iman, a whole level of taqwa. I, and subhanAllah, he does the same thing to her. He boils her, all of them alive. And so when the Prophet وسلم, hears this, he's just, he's just overwhelmed. He's just overwhelmed. And of course, then the question becomes, like, and when he tells the companions this, the question becomes, like, how, like, who is she? How does she, how does she learn about, like, how does she know the deen? What happens? So I'm, what happens next? You know what happens next? Queen Asiya runs when she hears the story. She runs the Pharaoh. And she said, did you, did you murder her and her entire family? She's, she's asking him, like, I know that you're cruel. I know that you've done some horrible things, but tell me you didn't do that. And he says, I did. She was talking about this religion of Musa saying that Allah was her Lord. She said Allah was my Lord. And he began to laugh. And at that moment, 
Queen Asiya confesses. Queen Asiya says, Allah Rabbi, wa Rabbuk, wa Rabbil Alameen. And this is the moment where he literally orders all of her clothes to be ripped off. He drags her by her hair, hangs her off the balcony. And initially the people are screaming, oh, Pharaoh, this is the beautiful, the queen Asia, the kind, the merciful, the generous, please. And he says, you know what she, you know, you know what she said? And then immediately the people back off and say, oh, Pharaoh. He murders her, subhanAllah. He literally leaves her first in the desert naked for three days, expecting that the animals would eat her alive. And he sends the soldiers to go find her after three days. And when they find her alive, they literally drag her back by the, by the horse. They drag her back. And when she gets there, he's like, you're still not dead. So then he orders a horse to be tied on one side of her and another on the other. And he keeps whipping the horse until it's literally separating her limbs and the skin from its bones. She begins to make a dua that's mentioned in the Quran. She says, my Lord, build with me, build for me with you a house in Jannah. Right? And Surah Al-Tahrim, she meant like, build for me with you a house in Jannah. And SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally shows her in that moment the malaika building her home. She smiles. She smiles. Pharaoh becomes enraged. He says, how dare you? How dare you? I'm torturing you after everything I've done. And you smile? Why? You smile? And she says, and save me from Pharaoh and his, and his, and, and the evil, his evil folks, his evil, the evil people who come with me. Come with him. And in that moment, subhanAllah, he's, he's so angry that she smiled. She makes this dua, like, save me from him, ya Rabbi. So he then orders a catapult to crush her body. Right before the catapult comes, the catapult's a rock, a stone, a boulder to crush her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes her soul. Now you might be wondering, why do I tell you this story tonight? Because in these moments, what will you do for Allah? What will you withstand to say, Allah, I, won't, I will not deviate from this day? I am, how will you say I'm not concerned about the people. I'm not concerned about their opinion of me. I'm not concerned about my perceived notion of what they might do to me, whether imagined or real. I'm not, I don't care. What I care about is what does my Lord think of me? I'm concerned that I'm going to face my Lord one day. Will my prophet sallallahu alayhi wa smell me coming with a beautiful scent, subhanAllah.